Coming up, the Reverend Sam Rodriguez of the National Coronavirus Recovery Commission on what you need to know about religious freedom. Welcome to another Real American Heroes Special Edition. I'm Oliver North, and our guest today, the Reverend Samuel Rodriguez. He's president of the National Hispanic Christian Leadership Conference, has advised Presidents Bush, Obama, Trump, and Congress on issues that you're going to hear about. He serves on Heritage Foundation's National Coronavirus Recovery Commission. And what we want to hear about, of course, is can we recover? Reverend Rodriguez, first of all, thank you for taking time to join us today. Thank you for having me. Honored to be with you, sir. Now, tell, tell our, our audience now what the National Coronavirus Recovery Commission is and what's its mission. The Recovery Commission, which is an outreach and extension of the Heritage Foundation, of course, is it exists for the purpose of writing policies, recommendations. And by the grace of God, these policies and recommendations have already landed at the White House and already some of these recommendations are in place. It, it, they are, these are recommendations that will do nothing other than help America recover out of this COVID-19 pandemic. It's uh, very well balanced. Uh, the diversity of the commissioners uh, representing the different interests of America's demographical, social, economic landscape speaks accolades to the uh, uh, cognitive bandwidth of the Heritage Foundation. So I am honored and blessed to be part of this commission. Let, let me ask you something here. When, when, when this commission was created, I don't think anybody was necessarily looking at the fact that we were not only going to have a pandemic and tens of millions of people out of work, hundreds of thousands of people dead, and riots and, and vandals, you know, tearing our cities apart. G give me a sense for how you dealt with this development, or these developments, plural, with the commission. You know, indeed. And some of the, what I would call the prescription, the antidote the commission lays out, uh, including, of course, protecting individuals and protecting America's long-term economic viability. These are the objectives. Th to create a dichotomy, there exists in mass media the idea that it's either or, and it's not, it's both and. Can we protect individual health while simultaneously protecting America's economic engine? And we can, and these recommendations lay out a rubric, for lack of a better phrase, that if implemented, will protect America's long-term economic viability. But we weren't aware that in the midst of this pandemic, uh, we would likewise encounter the angst, the consternation, the melees, and now we see rioting, looting, uh, the taking over, the commandeering of cities in America, of capitals in America. It's back to 1968, 69, and even elevated to a degree. So, yeah, Dorothy, we're not in Kansas anymore. But the decommissioning does recommend some very powerful recommendations that require Americans coming together for such a time as this. Well, you know, I, I'm, of course, you're in California. I'm here in Virginia. And I think we've all got issues with our various governors and the way they handle things. But Indeed. our governor here uh, opened up all the bars. Uh, you could go to a bar, but you couldn't go to church. And that's yep. what, in fact, there's still parts of Virginia where we can't go to church. And so I, I question whether... Again, the, the commission was set up without expecting these kinds of things to happen. What's the answer on that? I mean, the governors have authority. They're the chief executive of all 50 states. Yeah, but the governors have authority in the commission, via the commission, and outside the commission. I have vociferously elevated my voice for the purpose of advancing this radical idea, this un-American idea that our God-given rights do not expire. It's an American idea, of course. Our God-given rights do not expire. Uh, because of a pandemic. COVID-19 does not have the authority to assert my God-given right to worship. We're sacrificing our rights, our liberties on the altar of a pandemic. This is big government on steroids. For governors to say, hey, you can park in a parking lot in Costco, Sam's Club, and Walmart, or you can go to a bar. Liquor stores, by the way, are essential, but churches are not. Yeah. It's just absolutely absurd. It makes zero sense whatsoever. And my objective in the commission was to advance the idea that we have to identify churches as essential and protect religious liberty and all of our liberties throughout the course of the pandemic. Individual responsibility trumps government overreach and government, what I would call authoritarian or totalitarian incursions in our God-given sure. rights. So I do believe every single American should be vigilant, in, particularly in these difficult times. Well, but in our case, you know, the governor has actually threatened jail to people who, who are sitting in a parking lot listening to a sermon being given inside. I'm, it's, 
it, right? it, it's, what but do it's we not, do? But, 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 but my, my question is, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, my question is, where are the God-fearing Virginians and Californians <laughs> and in Michigan? Yeah. We, we need to push back. How do we push back? We push back not by rioting, not by looting, not by bringing down every single statue and monument on the planet. How do we push back the ballot box? We need to vote out of office every single individual who has some sort of totalitarian, authoritarian, socialistic worldview that runs counter to what makes us exceptional in America. So I, I, neither you nor I have the gift of prophecy. I know I don't. But look forward. If we have this, quote, spike that everybody keeps talking about, yeah. we're going to have a spike. Are we going to see more of the same kind of repression? Because that's what it really is. Now, you've heard from the current, from our, our administration, from the Trump administration, that even with a spike, and there are currently speaking some spikes, particularly in the Southern Belt states and in California, Arizona, right. there is a spike. What we really look at at the commission level is the number of ventilators, those in ICU, those and the deaths, of course. Sure. So there may be a spike due to the increased testing, but there seems to be some sort of, of measurable spike outside the measurement or the outside the number of increased testing. So there may be a spike in the fall. With that being said, President Trump has made a statement and his statement uh, to us has been very explicit. We are not going back to quarantining Americans, to locking down the nation, and to locking down our economy. Personal responsibility. Let's protect those that are most vulnerable. Yeah. Let's wear masks uh, in public if, if need be, uh, if required, because you're in a, con in a very uh, limited area around other individuals. Uh, let's continue to sanitize and contact trace. But individual responsibility, personal responsibility, free will, exercise it. Make sure we protect the most vulnerable. But for government to tell us to stay locked in our homes, we discovered that the pandemic, the spread of COVID-19 actually took place more at home than it did outside the home. So tell me, the 2020 election is very quickly upon us. You have an initiative called Our Church Votes. Tell our audience what that's all about. Yeah, we want, we want Christians to really register to vote. Uh, if you're committed to life, religious liberty and biblical justice. And I said biblical justice, not social justice. If you're committed to life, religious liberty, biblical justice, if you're committed to limited government, to the idea that God has given his giftings, hence free enterprise, innovation, creativity, if you're committed to these values, that even if you're not married, if you're not married to the agenda of the donkey or the elephant, but you're really married to the agenda of the lamb, it behooves you, you must register to vote. This, we know every single time there's an election, what, it, is, it is a cliche statement, right? The most important election in our generation. Oh, yeah. No, this really is arguably the most important election in our generation. So ladies and gentlemen, please, please register to vote. Vote your Christian worldview. Do not vote according to the color of your skin. Do not vote according to your social economic background, whether you're a Yankee fan or a Red Sox fan. <laughs> Vote according to a Christian world view. Sam, 50 years from now, my great-grandkids will be watching and learning about what took place in this era. What do you want my grandkids to know about what you, Sam Rodriguez, did during this pandemic and during this very, very difficult time in our nation's history? I want them to know that Sam Rodriguez, an, an American, a Christian who is an American who's family members have died and have served just like you have served so honorably served and my family members served and gave their lives to preserve the freedoms that i have that sam rodriguez did not sacrifice truth on the altar of political or cultural expediency that sam rodriguez was not complacent because today's complacency is tomorrow's captivity that sam rodriguez mobilized individuals families churches and communities to advance an agenda of life religious liberty and biblical justice and I'm glad I'm on Sam Rodriguez's team. God bless you, brother. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. We're going to continue documenting this history of this never before crisis with these special episodes. If this Real America special broadcast has been informative, helpful, or encouraging, take time now to subscribe and let me know how these unprecedented events have affected you and yours. By doing so, you too can become part of this historical record of how America persevered 
and once again prospered. Until next time, remember, Semper Fidelis is more than a slogan for U.S. Marines. Always faithful is a way of life.